I will welcome you to this episode of map reading. Remember, in the last episode, we talked about how to draw a cross section. And we said that you join the two points in question, use a piece of paper or graph paper to demarcate the contours, and then after demarcating, transfer what you have demarcated to the graph paper, endeavor to put the horizontal distance, and then you get the scale. In this case, we used the vertical interval as the scale, and then write your title, and it must be showing where the cross section started from and where it is ending, and the different features that cross section is showing or presenting. Then we say that while showing those features, the arrows you put must touch the ground but not entering the ground. And then the cross section must be shaded. It must be shaded. And then you endeavor to put the scale. That is how we draw a cross section. Now, we are going to see how we can calculate the vertical exaggeration. Vertical exaggeration, especially asked after drawing the cross section, has a formula vertical scale divided by horizontal scale. The vertical scale is this one. The one we use the on draw, while drawing the cross section. And then the horizontal scale is the other one that is in the northwestern part of the map extract, which is one to represent 50,000. This one is in centimeters. But the vertical scale, in this case, one centimeter representing 100 feet is in a feet. This one is in a centimeters. And we cannot divide centimeters with feet. We cannot divide cows with goats. Which answers shall, which answer shall we get? For that case, we should first change these ones to centimeters so that we get the same figures. So we are going to change the vertical scale. This is the horizontal scale. So we are going to, remember, we only multiply by 30 to change to centimeters. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 7. And this will now be centimeters, not feet. So they are all in the same units. And we are going to get 1, 2, 30, 1,000, no, 3,000, not 30,000, divide by 1 to represent 50,000. This will be 1 out of 3, 0, 0, 0, divide by 1 out of 3, 5, 0, like this. And as usual, you put in some simple mathematics, it will be 1 out of 3,000 times 50,000 divided by 1. And this will be 5,000 out of 3, like this. And then you divide and you get your answer. And the units should be times. We are together? Very good. That is how we get the vertical exaggeration, especially after drawing the cross section. You only need to get the formula as vertical scale divided by the horizontal scale. Never copy from your neighbor while in the examination room. If your neighbor may get 3.3 times as the answer. For you, you find you're having 4.3 times as the answer. You may all be correct. Why? 
you may be using different vertical scales. Someone may have used one centimeter to represent 85 feet. So if you get this, you multiply by 30. It will not give you 3,000. And the answer you have got, you divide by this, you are going to get a different answer. Meaning that the vertical exaggeration may differ from what your neighbor or what your friend has got. So don't say that, ha, me, I got 4.3 and my neighbor got 2.2, meaning my answer is not correct. Your answer is also correct as long as you follow the procedure. Since there is no constant answer for vertical exaggeration. Please consider your vertical scale. Remember, even if someone uses this, even if someone uses one to represent two hundred feet as the vertical scale, the shape of the cross section will remain the same. The shape will remain the same. Only that for you use the different scale and this one also uses his or her own scale. So make sure the scale you use is what you maintain while getting the vertical exaggeration. We are now going to talk about description of relief. The question is describe the relief of the area shown on the map extract. Do not describe the relief of the map extract, but describe the relief of the area that you are seeing on the map extract. And while describing the relief, we consider the what? The contours. Consider the contours. Where we need to know that where contours are so compacted and close to each other, like this, this means a hilly region or a highland. Then where contours are scattered, the spacing here, the compaction is not like this one. Then we shall also have areas like where we have a lake, in swamp areas, in boggy areas, completely no contour. Those will be that this may be this can be called gentle, and the other one, especially where we find a swamp, where we find lakes, this can be lowland. I have described it, the relief, but remember this is map reading. If you are saying lowland, where have you seen the lowland on the map extract? If I'm to use this map extract of Nageso and I'm describing the relief, I'm seeing a lake in the central part of Nageso, that is the lake Kwania, then I will say there is a basin, there is a lowland, but where is it? In the central part of Navieso. So someone will go to the central part of Navieso and is going to find a basin there. That's what we mean by description of relief. But with evidence, if I'm saying this part is hidden with steep slopes, if I say the northern part of Navieso around Rwankuria Hill, is here. It has all. It has steep slopes. Someone should go to that very area and should see that the place is here. That is what we mean by evidence. Go there and find it. So while describing relief, tell someone, direct someone by direction, by local place names. by grid box or squares. Tell someone that go to this grid square, you are going to find an all. Go to this grid square, you will find this. 
tell someone that in the southeastern part of this area, around this local place name, around this, uh, this place, there is such and such a feature. That is when you are going to be describing relief. Then we have these common answers that everybody must not forget while describing relief. The vertical interval. We saw how to calculate the vertical interval. And the vertical interval is always in the southwestern part of that map extract you will be holding. And it will be written there. Let's say 100 feet. Vertical VI is it, this one. So the, write it as while describing the relief. You say the vertical interval of Navieso map extract is 100 feet. Tell us the lowest point as remember the lowest points are always found in the basins, in the lowlands, in the lakes, in the uh, sorry, al along the lake, uh, in the swampy areas. That's where we find the lowest points. So I said the lowest point is let's say three, four, five, zero feet at direct that person. If you go to this place, you will find the lowest contour. The highest point of the map extract is 4850 feet. And where is it? Especially where we have the primary trigonometrical station. Direct someone, go to the eastern part of this and this, you will find it there. That is when you are reading the map, not assuming the map. Now, if you have the highest contour, you have the lowest contour, tell us the amplitude. You say the amplitude is, get this one minus this, and you get the answer. In feet, we are describing relief. Tell us the average, average height. Where you get the highest plus the lowest, you divide by two. You also get the answer. We are still describing relief. So mathematically, we can describe relief using these figures and you pass and you get all the maximum max. Tell us the vertical interval, tell us the lowest point, tell us the highest point, tell us the amplitude by subtracting the lowest point from the highest point, and then tell us the average height. However, while telling us the highest point, you must tell us where we can find it on the map extract and how can you tell us by using direction local place names and grid squares you can t tell us the lowest point but you must tell us where we can get it on the map extract the vertical interval just subtract any two they get the difference of any two successive contours then we have other features that we may use while describing relief. This one is a ridge. Where you find something like this, this is a hill, but on top it is a little bit flat. This is a ridge. And now, on top of the ridge, you find we have something like this. This is a small hill on a hill, then another small hill on a hill, then we find that there is a valley. There is a valley, but on a hill. Because on the hill, this will be, this is a ridge, this is a hill. Then on the hill, we have another hill. The hill, we have another hill. This is what we are talking about. All this is a ridge made up of series of hills. But on top, we have one hill. We have another hill. So this is a valley. But the valley on the hill. And that is what we call a saddle. So tell someone that there is a saddle on this grid reference. There is a saddle in the eastern part around this point. But when the space between the two hills is small, then we say there is a call. This one, the first one, the saddle, you can also call it U-shaped valley. Then this call, you can call it V-shaped valley. I thank you.
for watching and let us meet in the next episode where we are going to talk about still map